Everybody, welcome inside Heinz Field and welcome to another edition of Training Camp Live presented by FedEx. I'm Missy Matthews, joined by Mike Pursuta, and you are taking a live look at Heinz Field. As you can see, Pursuta, if I had to guess, it looks like the middle of the field between those hashes was resodded sometimes sometime between when the Saturday night practice wrapped up, that storm that rolled through that ended it a little bit early. The players were off on Sunday, and we are back out here today, and the players are in pads as they're coming out for another 130 practice. You know, you channeled your inner Brett Musburger there, Missy. You are looking live <laughs> at a resodded Heinz Field. It's good to be back. Good to see you back. Yes, Welcome thank back. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's been uh, an interesting go so far as we get ready for week two in pads. This is Monday today, correct? Today is Monday. A fresh start to the week. Because I can tell you that uh, most years at training camp, the days all start to run together sooner rather than later and you really don't know what day it is when you wake up you can't be sure at least and uh, I don't know about you I'm there uh, that much is normal for me uh, here at uh, training camp 2020 but uh, good stuff on the zoom again today fun night on Saturday the Steelers uh, putting the uniforms on and playing the playing the warm-up music and, and playing the uh, low-level ambient background noise mm -hmm. that made quite a difference uh and getting out of here, noise. getting out of here before the storm of all storms descended. So, all right, there's nope. a live look pursued at the O line again. Practice expected to start around 1:30. Another day in pads. Ryan Switzer right there, and it was a physical practice on Saturday night. It was also a little different because Coach Tomlin wanted to simulate a game day experience for the new faces, the young guys who have no idea what to expect with no preseason games when they get ready for Monday Night Football. That game against the New York. Football, football giants. giants there i got it for you uh they already have said there will be no fans so maybe that crowd noise that we heard on saturday night might be what they're going to hear on week one monday night football but there were a number of guys who were hurt during practice some guys who missed practice so as players are trickling out of the locker room onto the field we'll try to give you a head count uh there is chook somebody who spoke today chooks a core for via zoom we'll talk about that in a little bit we also have tunch ilkin and craig wolfley will be joining us as well to offer some wisdom and insight from their perspective as you said oh look at that shot you got chooks and zach banner is that artistic or what <laughs> the two guys battling it out for right tackle I like it. Oh, this is good stuff, Missy. Also, we do want to go over the fact that Kevin Colbert, the Steelers general manager, released a statement yesterday. There were six players who were held out of practice Saturday night. Here's the statement from Colbert. Quote, on Saturday, we had six players absent from practice due to our adherence to the COVID NFL COVID-19 protocol. None of those players were required to be placed on the reserve COVID-19 list and will be returning to meetings today. That meant Sunday and practice on Monday. Coach Tomlin did uh, talk about that very briefly during his post-practice press conference on Saturday night in pursuit as it turns out there are a number of teams dealing with things like this this is what the only statement released from the Steelers but Adam Schefter of ESPN said that the Steelers had six false positives along with other teams like the Browns the Jets the Vikings I believe there was 10 in all yeah everybody that uses that uh, lab in New Jersey apparently uh, at least that's what I've seen reported and uh, basically going into the weekend uh, positive tests were coming up at a rate of less than 1%, fewer than 1%. And then all of a sudden, a whole bunch of them all from the same lab. So the NFL uh, erred on the side of caution and uh, shut some guys down. And some teams either changed uh, their weekend itineraries or, or, or declined to practice until they had more information. More information has been received. And as you heard uh, just a moment ago, Missy reading Kevin Colbert's statement, uh, the Steelers, who are uh, healthy enough to practice today, will practice today. And uh, I don't know how you interpreted that. To me, it was interesting as we said, look at that. That's a good sight. That would be uh, Dave DeCastro with pads on and his uniform. We have not seen him in the portion of Steelers training camp that we have been allowed to broadcast the beginning of practice and for the media to watch. So I am sure, Prasuda, you can expect that will be in the pool report for today. David DeCastro dressed in gold pants and a black t-shirt and a white uniform jersey, practice jersey with the number 66 on it. Uh, and a helmet. That's good to see. But uh, just to finish the last point, it, it was interesting to see how the NFL went through that process where all of a sudden there were a number of positive tests. And it seems like it was resolved quickly. And it seems as if, you know, everybody's got their head down and, 
and their eye on the ball here, and uh, nobody was expecting, I don't think, uh, a perfect run through without any positive tests anywhere. But uh, the show must go on, and so far the show is going on. And, uh, you know, September the 14th, Missy, it's getting closer every day. All right, you are now looking at Cam Canada. He was one of the four players that were hurt in practice on Saturday night that Coach Tomlin mentioned. We will go over the long snapping uh, backups pursuit. I heard you are also one of them. But other than Cam Canada, he is dealing with a knee injury. Doesn't appear he has his pads on right now. Robert Spillane with a finger injury. Wendell Smallwood shoulder. Uh, we mentioned Cam Canada and Chris Wormley now dealing with a shoulder injury. A new face for the Steelers on the defensive line, and it seems like injuries keep nagging him so we'll have to keep our eyes out pursuit if he is out there or not yeah and, uh it's good to see camp Canada. i yeah, might want to keep him healthy based on what we saw <laughs> and based on what mike tomlin had to say but well we haven't identified the backup long snapper yet could that be because they really don't want to uh get well soon cam and he apparently is uh, on the road to recovery throwing motion looks very good i don't know what that would uh, apply to his long snap. Look at the flexibility there he's showing, <laughs> doing the doing the stretch thing. He looks like he's going to be okay, Missy. Well, Coach Tomlin did say Vance McDonald has uh, done a little bit of that. Marquise Pouncey, also another candidate. So uh, we will have to see. But as you said, uh, it didn't sound like he was ready to say this is our backup because he probably hasn't seen enough of what he wants for that backup position. According to our uh, handy-dandy uh, practice pool report from Saturday night, Vance McDonald's long snapping after Canada left was erratic. It's not a word you want to ever hear applied no. uh, well to anything. I was going to say particularly in the kicking game, but uh, you don't want erratic execution of the defense, erratic pass catching or throwing, and you don't want erratic long snapping. All right, another player who has been injured, Kevin Dotson, the rookie offensive lineman. Our handy-dandy spotter, Alec, down on the field, has told me that it does not look like Dotson will be able to go today. Also, Chooks, I did see whenever we were taking a look, Chooks Okorafor, uh, of the offensive line, he did not have pads on. So he is out here today, but Chooks does not have pads on. So maybe it'll be a big banner day, Zach Banner day, at the right tackle position. So, I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, a good look at uh, Dotson. Uh, he's got the floppy hat on, catching the ball a little right. bit. But uh, good for him that uh, he is in the state that he's in and not uh, a more damaged condition after what occurred the first week in pads. A lot, a lot of hype about Kevin Dotson, Missy, and uh, I don't think it necessarily reflected a guy who was going to challenge for a starting position this year, but he's certainly a guy who's going to have a shot to play some football here eventually. And uh, the more – learning he can go through the more experience he can get in helmet in pads uh the better for him so uh good to see that uh, he's still with the group and uh looks like uh he's going to be on the mend pretty quick here all right it also looks like no 95 today that is chris wormley also pursued i'm trying to keep turning around looking to see if ben roethlisberger is out there and what he is wearing because that is what we do here of course i think ben uh has been out there and maybe to the surprise of some of us but coach shellman has been asked about it and has pretty much said you know he has a plan we're sticking to it all things are good, so I, I'm, I am interested to see what he does today. Yeah, the plan is, uh, as, according to Mike Tomlin, is not based on a guy coming off of elbow surgery. The plan is based on getting Ben Roethlisberger ready, and as uh, most people uh, who are into the Steelers enough to tune into a program such as this are probably aware, Ben Roethlisberger for the last several years has gone on a full day, half day, off day rotation in training camp, but... Uh, this is a different year for him, and uh, while he's, he has been given full medical clearance, so far more work than he usually puts in Missy, and uh, i got to say a little more than I was expecting, not that I had any reasonable basis to you know, center my expectations around, but I thought he might ease into it a little more. He has been uh, ever-present out there. All right, there's Mason Rudolph, one of the quarterbacks, who is in his pads ready to go for practice today. We mentioned Dave DeCastro back out there today. He missed Saturday night along with James Conner, Stefan Tewitt, Deontay Johnson, Terrell Edmonds, and also Marquise Pouncey, who he said. So um, I actually just got an update from our spotter, Alec. He said that 34 is a no-go for today. So no Terrell Edmonds, it looks like, for practice today. Those are the guys that we haven't been given real injuries for. Maybe it was just a day off by Coach Tomlin. He talked a lot about how veterans 
veteran guys will get some time off to allow for reps for the younger guys and also rest their bodies. So we will have to see on there. But somebody we do know, James Washington, who has worked his way back from injury in terms of what we have been able to watch, was part of the Zoom uh, media frenzy today. We heard from a ton of great people, coaches, and players pursued up between Sunday and today. So let's go ahead and take a listen to number 13. Uh, you know, I feel a lot lighter out there running around. Uh, I feel a little more explosive coming off the ball. Uh, you know, just being able to jump uh, is, is night and day different, it feels like. And, uh, you know, I just feel like an all-around new person. You know, when you shed some weight like that and kind of lean down just a little bit more. So it, it's all paying off. It's year three. Does it feel a little bit like the clock is starting to tick and, and that you kind of have to – maybe take a, a significant step forward this year in terms of your performance to kind of show that you can be the playmaker they, they thought they were getting when they drafted you? Uh, you know, just, I mean, it is year three, but, you know, I never want to add extra pressure to myself. Um, you know, all I can do is just go out and try to get better each and every day with the offense and, you know, get on the same page with seven and, and earn his trust. And, you know, the, re the rest will take care of itself. All right, that was James Washington this morning via Zoom speaking with the media. Juju Smith-Schuster is out at practice not wearing pads, Pursuta, so we can add him to our list as well of trying to see who's practicing, who's not, who has pads on. But what else did you take away from James Washington this morning? Uh, interesting, uh, you know, he talked about Ben Roethlisberger being back and looking like a brand new person and – he even said it's kind of nice to see Seven back in his game jersey and pads and stuff. He was referencing Saturday night's festivities here at Heinz Field. Missy, I'm pretty sure they didn't do all of that just so Ben Roethlisberger could run out of the tunnel in full uniform and show everybody, yeah, I really am back. But I know, think he knows how to do that. But you know what? <laughs> he, he was in full uniform and he ran out of the tunnel. And I don't know. To me, it was, it was a moment, right? Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But James Washington, certainly it, it resonated with him. But uh, what also resonated with me, and as James Washington acknowledged, at least for a little while, resonated with him after last season ended, the pass he didn't catch against the Jets. If people remember late in that game, uh, Devlin Hodges threw a ball into the end zone, and James Washington had a safety on him, and he had both hands around the ball. He had a, he had a grasp of it from, uh, from both sides, and a safety was able to get his hand in there and knock it out. And... Uh, I asked James Washington if that play stuck with him at all because he was very hard on himself in the immediate aftermath of that game. He said it should have been a touchdown. Uh, did it linger? For sure, Washington said. It was one of those plays you get remembered for forever. Any receiver would dwell on it for a little while. But he said he's over it now, and uh, he's you know moving forward and looking ahead, not behind. But the reason I bring it up is, to me, that was the type of play that illustrates the point that offensive coordinator Randy Fickner was trying to make uh, at the very outset of camp when he said they are elated to have Ben Roethlisberger back, but the offense cannot expect that Ben Roethlisberger's return alone fixes everything, and all of a sudden they're going to be a great offense. Now, Ben Roethlisberger isn't Bugs Bunny. He can't throw the ball and then run down the field and catch it himself, and that was a play that James Washington could have made but didn't. Should have, maybe that's a little strong, but could have certainly. Juju Smith-Schuster had a play uh, in the same game, right about the same time, a play that he thought he should have come down with and scored the game-winning touchdown. James Conner had a fumble uh, when they were trying to run the clock out against San Francisco. Juju had a fumble after he caught a pass from Devlin Hodges in overtime against Baltimore. And even in uh, the Mason Rudolph game in Cleveland when Rudolph threw the four interceptions, Johnny Holton had what would have been the tying touchdown on his fingertips. It, again, it would have been – a good catch, a better-than-average catch, but it wouldn't have been a spectacular catch. These are all examples, Missy, of uh, plays that Ben Roethlisberger wouldn't have had anything to do with. The guys either got to make them or they won't. So uh, it's good to remember and learn from the mistakes of a year ago, and I think uh, James Washington sounded today like a guy who's well on the way to doing that.
All right, a quick tally, a quick head count. James Conner is out there. Deontay Johnson not wearing pads, and I still have not been able to get my eyes on number seven, so unsure what his availability or practice schedule will be like today. But another person that we also heard from Zoom today, Mike, was Minka Fitzpatrick. <laughs> uh, and I think we all learned something when you hear from Minka there. You see number 39 with the helmet on. Uh, you heard the horn just a few minutes ago. The Steelers are starting the warm-up portion portion of practice so big takeaways from minka this morning you know right off the bat uh i kind of asked him about the give and take of training camp and uh, who's winning the offense or the defense and i mentioned you guys are making some plays and they're making some plays and the suggestion that the offense was making some plays really bothered minka fitzpatrick he said what what practices are you watching and i said well the ones where they're catching the ball i mean let's go back to day one uh, the, the Chase Claypool catch over Joe Hayden that Joe Hayden spent so much time elaborating on a couple of days later because he was so impressed with the play that Chase Claypool made there. Yeah, the offense is making some plays, but uh, Fitzpatrick's response told me a lot, Missy, in terms of what this defense expects of itself, uh, how good it thinks it can be, and how competitive it has been out here to the degree that the defense is not willing to concede anything, even uh, if a play or two, or more than that, get made by the offense. We saw uh, on uh, Saturday night uh, a long run by Benny Snell, and uh, Minka Fitzpatrick came up and made the play, and uh, those two guys got in each other's faces at the end of that. And uh, Minka Fitzpatrick said, hey, I knew Benny was going to be coming, so I had to be coming, and it's got to be competitive out here because uh, there are no preseason games. Not that a lot of the starters would play a ton in preseason games anyway, but uh, the the ever-present, uh, line that they are trying to straddle, uh, the, the wire they're trying to walk between preparation and preservation. We're seeing the preparation part showing up here with regularity. All right, I don't want to interrupt your train of thought in terms of Minka Fitzpatrick. We will get right back to that, Mike Pursuta. But Ben Roethlisberger is out on the practice field. He is not wearing a jersey today. To give the official pool report for Pursuta, since I know you love this, love black it. ball cap, black T-shirt, black shorts. This is the first day, Mike, we just mentioned it as we were kind of going over <laughs> Saturday night's practice, that we are not seeing Ben Roethlisberger participate at Steelers training camp in terms of when the media has been allowed to be in here and to watch it. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been uh, impressive to see how often and how regularly he has worked, uh, the work that he has put in. Uh, today sounds like it's going to be a day for the other guys, and there's some stuff to sort out there too, Missy. Yeah, he's kind of uh, – I can see him down there. He's by Danny Smith and some of the other coaches, so uh, hopefully we can find a shot of number seven for you guys. Uh, he is – There he is. Oh, we got him. Okay, perfect. Yep. See, I, I'm not crazy. I knew it was Ben when I saw him. And did I give an accurate description of his wardrobe today? Does that meet? He looks like what? <laughs> the man in black. Here we. I guess that's the official if you're not uh, practicing what you go over. with. He's taking the Dave DeCastro yeah, outfit. Taking over for Dave DeCastro. No Ben today, but as we mentioned, we did get Dave DeCastro back. Uh, just to quickly, in case if you joined us a little late, James Conner is dressed and out there today after missing Saturday night's practice. Here is my current list of people not practicing. You see number seven there, Ben Roethlisberger. Not in pads today, Juju Smith-Schuster, Chris Wormley, Terrell Edmonds, Chooks Okorafor, Kevin Dotson, and Deontay Johnson. So that is who I have been able to see, and our, as I said, our trusty spotter, Alec, has been helping us as well up here in the tent. But we do, uh, of course, as I said, have Tunch Ilkin and Craig Woofley joining us today to talk about a number of things, uh, a little bit of, you you always laugh at me. I'm just, I'm having a good time. This All right, yeah, the football's back. So we I do. laugh when I'm happy. <laughs> I mentioned Chooks Akorafor not practicing today, but it's time for Wolf's Wisdom. Do you like the alliteration? I love it. Wolf, I hope you have the headset on and you can hear us. I know Chooks is not going today. We had a chance to hear from him via Zoom this morning talking about that right tackle battle with Zach Banner. What can you tell us about Chooks as he has been doing and what you've seen from him so far during this camp? Well, the young man's doing a lovely job competing, and that's what you want to see. You want to see a guy out there going at it, having at it with everybody, and doing the job that you know he's capable of doing. But, uh, you know, you got yourself Zach Banner, who's running stride for stride with him. It's interesting because Big Al took a day off. Chooks went over to that left tackle. He's got that ability to swing 
both sides. And I like what I see out of Chukes. He's using his hands. He's kick-stepping. He's coming off on the run block. He's getting inside position. He can help himself by timing his punch better and being able to nail him at the end of his punch. He's six foot six and 320 pounds. Gadzooks, think about it. He's smaller than, than Zach Banner. How can a man 6'6", 320 be smaller? But he is. And so he's got to make the most out of what he's got. Ned is long arms. He's got some great feet. Being a soccer goalie, that's something that he's capable of using even more so. And we'll see him grow into this job. I'd love to see him out there competing today. But since we can't, hey, you know what? This is this is a, a time for Zach Banner to be able to get some strides in. Wolf, we had uh, Chukwuma Korfor on the Zoom today, and he was asked about catching passes off the jugs gun the way Zach Banner has been doing right. from time to time here. Now, Zach Banner last year was the big tight end or the third tackle, however you want to classify that jumbo package guy. Of course, he went out on routes uh, oh so occasionally. They're never going to throw the ball to him, but he's prepping his hands anyway just in case. Is that an indication that, well, it's probably going to be the way it was last year. Zach Banner's going to be – the, the swing guy, the big tight end guy, and uh, Chuck Wuma for who said he's not working out on the jugs at all, is going to be the right tackle. Well, let it be known that towards the end of my career with the Steelers, I also played some goal line tight end. I did not work out on the jugs gun either at that point in time. I did run a couple of routes, one where I actually, the nickelback in Miami, uh, slipped and fell laughing because the outcut was so slow. However, I did redeem myself on the traps. So there you go. What I'm saying with Chooks, hey, it's too early to tell. We'll find out as these guys go along, but yet the sample size is too small for, for us to really get any kind of feel about who's ahead, who's leading, whatever. I know and I would think that Chooks has got a slight edge in the sense of this. Last year when they needed him, needed a, you know, when they moved Matt Filer to guard against the Rams, what'd they do? They moved Chooks or against the Chargers. They moved Chooks to the right tackle, right? So – they prefer, or at least they're giving him a slight edge, a slight nod. Maybe because Zach has more vertical speed up the seam than does Chooks. We'll see. That must be it. That must be it. <laughs> well, how much does it hurt that there are no preseason games? And could this be, okay, they think they have determined who it is for week one, and then we see it change? There's no question about it. You're not, I, you probably won't get a declared winner until uh, going into game week one. And maybe after that, it might be undecided with a couple back and forths. We don't know. I mean, that's the thing about it. With no preseason game, who comes out and takes command of that job? Who's got a stranglehold on it? I don't know because you have to look at the competition you face in practice and, and, be, and kind of evaluate that as well as how that person is doing against them. It's easy to evaluate Craig Wolfley versus Joe Green. <laughs> OK, on one hand, there's a Hall of Famer. On the other, there was a screaming guy, number 73, going backwards. Well, you know what? That's pretty easy. OK, the point being is you've got to look at who they're competing against in practice and make an evaluation. That's extremely tough because you don't have the mental RPMs going on in your gourd like you do on game day. Even being preseason, it's still a step up in intensity and game speed is very, very hard to emulate in practice. Another thing that Chuke said today, Wolf, was that it has been weird not having Dave DeCastro at practice, and it's just somebody he's been used to. So number 66 is practicing today. He is in pads. We'll see how much he does. How much does that help Chukes or Zach Banner in terms of getting in the reps that they can whenever they are out there? You know, whenever you can have an all-pro guard as your whoopee, that's a good place to be, all right? There's safety there. There's, there's security. You know that that guy is going to be there. He's going to lock and load, get the job done. And if you have, a, like, a, a brain malfunction going on, he's going to be able to solve it for you, lickety-split, okay? But the fact is, Dave DeCastro is that type of performer. He's going to be that way for either Chooks or for Zach Banner. And the fact is, either one of those guys lining up, you got a great, great compadre right there, such as when I was fortunate and blessed enough to play in between Mike Webster on one side and the great John Kolb on the other side. So it, he's in good hands. That's a beautiful place to be. All right, Wolf, let's move over to the defensive line. Stefan Tewitt, who did not practice on Saturday night, is out there today, so we'll see what he is able to do. But Tyson Aluwalu is somebody we had a chance to hear from on Sunday, even though the team didn't practice. What are you seeing from him as a veteran and somebody who's trying to win that nose tackle position? 
I see a guy who knows what he's doing and doing it all the time. You know, the thing about Tyson and what you love about Tyson and why Tyson was brought in, because whether he's lining up over top of the center, the guard, a five technique over the tackle, he can play them all. He'll play them all as a great pro. All right, there's there's some pros that, you know, they, they get to a certain level and they just stagnate there. Tyson keeps going at high levels, and he's athletic for such, a, you know, he's an older guy. I forgot how many. Is he double-digit years? I'm not even sure yet. He's very close to maybe his 11th year even. But the fact is this guy is still capable of putting high production out on that field. And whether he's playing the nose tackle where, let's face it, if you're at the nose tackle, you are in close quarter combat. There is very little reactionary time. You are right there, nozzle to nozzle with the center, okay? It is a close quarter combat type atmosphere in in a, in a phone booth, if you will. As you move out from there, you got more space. You're able to operate, whether you're a three technique, a five technique, anything that brings out brings comes out from the center, you got a little more space. But for Tyson, with his athleticism, playing that nose tackle position, I think it's something that he can take as a real positive thing because they don't have the big double teams like they used to have back in our day where you're, you're trying to move that guy backwards. They're Move, making that guy move laterally more than they are back and forth. And I think for Tyson, it's a perfect time to be playing some nose tackle. He plays low with that pad level. He's quick with his hands. He jams the center. He can take on the guard, what have you. But the fact is, I think he's a competent pro who just shows that he's capable of playing any one of those positions up front at a very high level. Well, if you hit the nail on the head when you said pro, uh, it is his 11th season. They don't just let you hang around that long right. unless you're serving value and uh, I think with uh, Alu Alu, it's not just how he plays, it's how he prepares to play. We heard Mike Tomlin talking uh, last week about how this guy practices, how he warms up, how he studies, the example he sets for younger players. Uh, you don't just show up on Sunday and play well either, at least most guys don't. Uh, th- this guy gets it from, from the time he walks into the building on Monday morning till the time he leaves on Sunday night. You're exactly correct, Mike. That's a great point. He is a pro's pro, and he's one of those guys that you love having in your room because if you got the young Carlos Davis and the other guys, the other rookies and, and so forth, you say that's what it looks like to be a pro. Watch this guy. Watch how he prepares. Watch how he prehabs, rehabs. Watch how he studies film. He's got a notebook. Watch all those things. See what he does. Then go and do likewise. That's how guys turn out to be pretty competent pros when you have a leader in the, in the, in the room and you get guys that follow along like Tunch and I learned from the late great Mike Webster, John Cole, Larry Brown, all those guys. Well, if I do want to ask you one more question, I don't think you were prepared for this one, but no Ben Roethlisberger today at practice. So Mason Rudolph, I'm sure, will have a heavy day in terms of reps. How big is that for somebody like him who there are no preseason games? It's something he talked about with the media on Saturday morning that he really has to show out in practice. You're talking about Ben not practicing or yeah, Mason? And, well, Ben not practicing, but Mason having a chance yeah. to you know, run the first team. They are in pads today, and I'm sure Coach Tumlin has been keeping things very physical here at training camp. Can you say excitement? Yeah, for Mason, <laughs> I'm telling you. This is something you look forward to. That guy's down. This is my turn. I cut back in the saddle. Yeah, there's no preseason games. I want to run with the ones. I want to show – competency with the ones and the only way to do it this year because of what we're facing is to get out there and do it in the confines of Heinz Field so for Mason this is one of those moments where yeah it's practice yeah it's training camp but you got to have a little more RPMs now motoring in your gourd because you've got to be able to take the bull by the horns and show what you can do because you already got your Hall of Famer sitting out now the stage is yours what are you going to do with that stage All right. Wolf, thank you for Wolf's wisdom today. You can pass things over to your good friend, Tunch Ilkin. We'll be checking in with him uh, just a little bit later coming up in the show. But hopefully we can head over to the tight ends. We are in the individual portion of practice. Uh, We had a chance to hear from Eric Ebron, Mike. And Eric Ebron is somebody that everybody talks about, no matter if it's an offensive or defensive player. He is a new face. He brings a lot of energy, and he is not shy about that. And one thing that I think everybody took away from his media availability on on Sunday is about hitting the sleds and how Coach Tomlin has been keeping a close eye on that. Yeah, that woke that woke me up on uh, Sunday about noon. I think we did that uh, either just a little bit before or a little bit after. But uh, it caught me by surprise uh, on a couple of occasions, Missy. Uh, Eric Ebron said that he has heard that Mike Tomlin was spending a lot of time watching the tight ends. Now, you've been around training camps long enough to know that when Mike Tomlin – 
is closely observing a particular position during uh, position work, they know when he's there because he is critiquing everything and anything. He is ever-present. So Eric Ebron knows that Mike Tomlin is watching him hit the sled. And the other thing Ebron said, uh, he thought that when he got out of college football, he was done hitting sleds, which uh, amazed me. I mean, the Steelers have always done it. Eric Ebron said that they did something similar to a sled. They hit something similar. A bag, I think. In Detroit. And he said they didn't do it in Indianapolis. Really? I I, I don't know if that's uh, a, a factual statement or if he was, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, remembering incorrectly. But uh, one thing I do know is they're hitting it here and they're going to hit it here. And if this guy is going to be the addition that the Steelers think he can be, he's going to have to be able to be on the field and contribute to running the ball. Because if they're going to go, if they're going to go two tight ends effectively, they got to be able to run or throw out of those two tight end sets. And, uh, Eric Ebron, you know, maybe uh, he, he comes here without a reputation as a blocker. His, his position coach, James Daniel, acknowledged the resume is as a pass catcher. I don't know. Maybe it's because nobody's ever asked him to block. They're going to ask him here. Right, and I just saw as we were following Eric Ebron with our live cameras here at Steelers camp, Coach Tomlin is indeed over there. There you see him right there. Yeah. He just James walked Daniel. right in front of him. You think he knows he's there? Oh, I think he knows he's there. I think they all know that he's there. And Eric Ebron even said, you know, it is a chance to get practice going. Yes, it makes me tired, but I am used to it. And he also elaborated a lot about going against Bud Dupree and a lot of blocking drills and just how hard that has been and how coach likes to put them in uncomfortable positions to get them ready. And he does it just about every day. I'm sure not even just on the practice field, but also in meetings. Yeah, it's, it, you know, you've, you've seen each guy – uh, have kind of the upper hand in terms of whether the drill is slanted toward running through open space and shaking a guy and catching a ball or, or having to move the guy off his spot. And uh, it's it's been evening out. Uh, again, sorry, Minka Fitzpatrick. I think the offense has made some plays at times. But uh, as uh, Ebron and even Minka today, uh, they all refer to that the iron sharpens iron or steel. A good Tomlin is for sure. Steel or, you know, steel wool, steel wool cleans up what you rub it on. I, it's, it's, it's beneficial to all. All right. Well, once again, we did ask everybody to submit some questions using hashtag Steelers Camp. And we also asked from Steelers Nation Unite, what player do you want to be part of our spotlight today? And Kylie wanted Anthony McFarland, the rookie running back. And what do you know? Tunch Ilkin is standing by live now. Tunch, what can you tell us about McFarland that you have seen so far during camp? Oh, Missy, I'm a big fan of Anthony McFarland. He's got great vision and he's got a great jump cut and when he gets into the secondary he is fast and one of the things I like what he does is when he's doing that outside zone he presses the outside linebacker he presses the tight end and so then he could bounce it outside and then he could cut it up uh, uh, in th off the tackle hole and then he could cut it back uh, to the center behind the center and that's the way the uh, uh, defense is going to be flat-footed when he is running the ball. And he plays with a low center of gravity. He runs over guys. And, uh, you know, he's a little shifty, too. And, and then when he gets to the secondary, he is gone. Tunch, they have a number of guys at running back that uh, have one or two things that they can do well behind James Conner. Given the situation of a very limited offseason, given – the situation of an abnormal training camp. Do you suspect that Mike Tomlin's at least thinking about kind of easing into it in terms of the division of labor in September, or will it be, you know, run them till the wheels fall off, and then and, and when you can't do that, you go to plan B and plan C? You know, I, I think they're going to run, run James a lot. But, you know, one of the things I think that Anthony McFarland – uh, is gonna uh, is gonna be the number two running back. You know, I I, I don't know that. Uh, you know, Benny Snell might be because Benny's really fast and Benny had a great run uh, the day before yesterday. But uh, I, I think Anthony McFarland is physical. He's shifty. Uh, he can dodge raindrops and he's fast and he's got great vision. And so I think that they're gonna use him uh, to spell James Conner. 
Sanch, I've heard you say dodging raindrops before describing Kareth White, another member of that running backs group. I want to read to you from the practice report, the poll report on Saturday night, another edition of Backs on Backers. Uh, four days from the first one, which happened on Monday, the standout was Marcus Allen, who beat Kareth White in a back-to-backers right. rep, then beat Ro- White again before splitting with Trey Edmonds, another running back in that group. He also beat Anthony McFarlane on one rep. He and Mike Hilton were the only defensive backs to take part in that drill. Also, linebacker Vince Williams shake and then bowled his way over Anthony McFarlane that got Coach Tomlin's attention. What does a young guy like Anthony McFarlane do when you have a practice like that? It is just one competition period, but we also know that he's been doing some good things according to the poll report as well. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Missy, when you know, he's blocking. You know, he's got to step up to pick up uh, uh, the linebacker. He's got to step up to pick up uh, Vinny Williams. And so Vince, uh, he is a shaky uh, pass rusher. You know, he just shakes and he swims and he rips. But one of the things when he sets you up, he shakes and bulls. And he explodes into you and drives you back into the uh, uh, quarterback. So, uh, you know, I I think uh, Anthony McFarlane and the young guys, Kareth White, they've got to get used to uh, the pass rush on uh, and and guys. And and they're physical. You know, uh, Vinny is very, very physical. I want to get off the running backs for just a minute because we talked earlier today about Cam Canada and how he left practice on Saturday and how Mike Tomlin said the backup long snapper has yet to be identified or has yet to make himself known. Uh, if I'm remembering right, you were uh, on the team when Mike Webster snapped the ball in, right. the, la- in the Lake Erie at yeah. Cleveland. Uh, it, it's, it, it seems like a skill that everybody could kind of perfect if they put a little time in, but it's not. The, it's harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah, you know, uh, long snapping, I, I could never get it. You know, when I, I came out in Indiana, Indiana State as a center, uh, and I was uh, long snapping, and Chuck was working with me every day after the first practice in camp, and I still couldn't get a hold of it. So when we went to Cleveland, I think the second year, uh, Webby had three bad snaps, uh, very very high, and so he'd come off the uh, off the practice or off the game field, and he'd say. Was that high? I said, no, he should have had it. And uh, and then so he said to Bob Golick, uh, send that uh, football that I snapped at the Lake Erie back because a, a barge guy uh, recovered it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back to the running backs, Tunch, uh, in case if you did not notice just yet, James Conner does have his pads on today, so that's a good yeah. sign. He missed Saturday night's practice. Also, I think I saw Wendell Smallwood I was, not. I was, just, I was able to turn around yeah. number 21. Wendell Smallwood is not practicing today. He was one of the four players, Coach Tomlin said, was injured during practice Saturday night. But Smallwood, one of those interesting guys that the Steelers picked up before training camp, Tunch, what have you seen from him? Yeah, I saw. I, I, I've seen a little shiftiness. I've seen uh, uh, a little speed, and I've seen a low center of gravity. Uh, but you know what? I, I haven't uh, watched him carefully. I, I, I you know, when I, I'm, I'm looking at Benny Snell, I'm looking at James Conner, I'm looking at uh, Anthony McFarland, and uh, those are the guys that uh, keep my focus. And because I think those are the th- top three running backs. The run game, a big topic, of course, for this offseason, Tunch. You add Matt Canada to help with the offense, to help with the younger quarterbacks. Do you think we'll see something different in terms of what they can do to help improve that other than having number seven under center? You know, uh, I think they will. You know, I don't know how uh, uh, detailed you want me to be, but uh, I I think there's going to be a lot of misdirection because I've seen it uh, uh, in practice. And I, you know, and I've seen a lot of misdirection. And uh, one of the things, uh, when you have misdirection, when you have uh, uh, shifts and uh, motion, uh, and you have the uh, the running back uh, cutting it back, you keep the defense flat-footed. And so that's what I'm focusing on. Because like when when you play. Uh, the Baltimore uh, Ravens. I, I want to keep them flat-footed because they're very, very aggressive, and they over-pursue. So, you know, getting back to Anthony McFarland, if he's if he presses the tight end 
and then uh, uh, Baltimore Ravens over pursue. He cuts it back behind the center, and he's he's gone. All right, Tunj, that was the horn. The individual portion of practice has wrapped up. The Steelers are heading into the competition period, so thank you very much for your time. We appreciate your insight as always, and we do have a ton of Steelers fan questions, Mike, we want to get to. We asked everybody to let us know, what do you want to see as we start a brand new week? So Will William here wants to know, how is Mason Rudolph growing this year after a lot of starts and experience from last year? I know Tunch briefly talked about it, but how would you like to weigh in on that? Uh, it's just impossible to tell at this point, and it's going to be impossible to tell until if and when he gets in a game because we don't have any – preseason games he talked on Saturday about going back over every snap that he played at least twice uh, he talked about getting uh, feedback from inside and outside the organization and he talked about being more confident and feeling as if he grew from last year I'm not going to know until we do he did talk about the co the collarbone and how it was just dislocated and how I believe February he started feeling better, March he was throwing. So that was a, a scary situation when he went down in that Jets game. You could have been a lot worse, so that was good for Mason in terms of having the offseason and being able to prepare for this year, of course, knowing that Ben was coming back. So let's get to a few more questions before we have to wrap up things here on Training Camp Live presented by FedEx. Hi, Missy. I recently heard good things about Marcus Allen during backs on backers, but not not much else. How is Marcus's camp been thus far? And do you feel like he's carving out a niche on the team this year? Now, I know we just read part of that practice report, Pursuta, that was, you know, focused on Anthony McFarland and the backs on backers. Uh, Tom Bradley was asked about him today, and he has been popping up on the practice report. So what do you make of Marcus Allen and how he may be able to carve out a role for this defense? You know, they're, they're viewing him more and more, Missy, as uh, one of these uh, safety linebacker hybrid type of guys and uh, we haven't seen him do a ton of that but they, they think he has the capability to do it I think that versatility is going to be what what determines his fate you know one of the, one of the guys they picked up uh, a veteran acquisition Curtis Riley a safety he's he's a fifth year pro uh, the the guy they added uh, Shortly into training camp, Ray Ray McLeod, uh, wide receiver, is a third-year pro. Wendell Smallwood, who we talked about uh, a minute ago, is a fourth-year pro. When they're bringing in guys with that much NFL experience, they are turning up the heat on the competition. Mike Tomlin acknowledged that. Uh, I think Curtis Riley's going to make this team, and uh, he wasn't on this team last year. So, uh, you know, react accordingly if you're a reserve defensive back. The, the, the music is still playing, but there may be one fewer chair. All right, Mike, we have time for one more fan question as we wrap up this edition of Training Camp Live. This is from N.O. Do you guys think I am not I'm going to here I am looking up uh, Twitter names again. Dion Kane, I should have known. Do you think Dion Kane will be able to find a spot or role for the Steelers this season? Uh, to be determined, I, I'll say this. I really like Dion Kane. I like his physical skill set. I like his background. And I think he's a guy who has not found himself the right NFL fit yet. But uh, I think there's a lot to work with there. Uh, I'm not sure what they're thinking. There's four guys at wide receiver that we're sure are going to make this team. Uh, they're pretty obvious. Juju Smith-Schuster, James Washington, uh, Chase Claypool, and Deontay Johnson. Beyond that, is it five? Is it six? And who are they? Can't tell you just yet. Well, we will have to see what the poll report tells us after practice today. But just to recap, Mike, in terms of players not practicing today, Ben Roethlisberger, of course, looks like he is getting a day off. He was wearing shorts and a T-shirt and a ball cap. I had to throw that in there for you. Juju Smith-Schuster, Chris Wormley, Deontay Johnson, Terrell Edmonds, Chooks Akora for Kevin Dotson, Wendell Smallwood. The good news is Stephon Tewitt is back out of practice. Same with James Conner and also Dave DeCastro, somebody we have not seen here at all since we've been able to broadcast this show and for the media to watch. So again, we will have Coach Tomlin's press conference for you following practice along with our wrap-up show as well. So that's the news and notes. Happy Monday, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Mike, thanks as always for your time. Same goes to Tunch and Wolf. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow.